thing we need to understand as to what Jesus calls us to do, and that is that we are called uh, to, to not only hear his sayings, but do them. And in doing so, Jesus gives us this analogy where uh, you're going to have to be willing to put in the work. We're going we're gonna to have to have some aspiration. We're going to have to have some sweat. We're going to have to have some, some tough work where we're going to have to dig deep if we're going to build our spiritual house, houses or our homes up on the foundation who we know to be Jesus Christ. And so we understand that we're going to have to bust a sweat. We're going to have to work out our spiritual muscles. As a matter of fact, Paul would tell Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse number 7 that you got to exercise yourself toward godliness. In other words, godliness don't come because you get baptized. Godliness don't come because you decide you're going to stop hanging out with them and you're going to come back to church. Godliness don't just happen overnight. You don't snap your fingers and get godliness. Godliness comes when you work yourself toward the goal of godliness. In other words, you're going to have to deal with some people who are going to help you to be godly. Oh, y'all ain't ever met nobody that was designed to help you to be godly? Amen. There's some people who going to be designed to get on your nerves so your nerves can get stronger. Amen, walls. That's why people don't like to ask for patience in their prayer. We don't want to say the P word. Do we? Oh, Lord, if I ask for patience, that means God going to send me some P. Yes, that's right. There's some people who are designed to teach you patience. God has sent them your way to teach you how to bite down on your tongue. And if you're like me, you didn't bit your tongue many, many times. But you grow it. It means you're growing. But that's a part of digging deep. But I, I want to go back to the fact that Jesus used an analogy of people who come to him, and he likens them to construction workers who build houses. Okay? And I want us to understand that no matter where you build your house or how you build your house, your house will be tried. I want you to understand that, that every one of us will be tried. In other words, there's going to come a time, a storm, where you're going to go through some adversity that is going to prove what kind of house you have. I want us to understand that. that. That adversity then becomes the proving ground for our homes, our spiritual homes. And, and, and there are a lot of people who have built their homes not on the foundation of Jesus Christ. They have built it on other things. As a matter of fact, they have built it on quotes they got from someone else. And that's okay. There's a lot of good quotes out there that will help you uh, be a great person. But those quotes, those philosophies, those ideologies, uh, if they're not the word of God, they cannot protect your spiritual house. They are not built on the foundation of uh, Jesus Christ. I want us to understand that, that there are a lot of things that sound very good, and you may very well read a lot of books, and ain't nothing wrong with reading. We're a church that believes in education, don't we? We want you to go to school. Read all you can, but there is a difference between what you read and the engrafted word of God that is able to save your soul. Tyson two, tip, two, two cent tip might sound good. It might get you out of pinch. It may help talk you out of ticket. Amen. It, it may keep you out of jail, but my two cent tip cannot keep you from hell. You need to understand that the word of God is designed to save you. Therefore, you need to not only hear it, but do it. All right, all right. I, I, I was teasing somebody. It was a little hellfire and brimstone this morning. I got to finish up my hellfire and brimstone. Uh, some of y'all used to preaching like this. It's all right. Can I just give you a little bit more hellfire and brimstone? Listen, if you grew up in the Church of Christ, I know you got it. Amen. All of our preachers preach hellfire and brimstone. I can still do it too. Amen. All right. So, so I want us to understand that 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 that, that we are proven. Our spiritual homes are proven when life shakes our house. All right. Verse number 48 says, and a stream, and, a, and, and when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently. Now, Matthew don't call it a stream. Matthew calls it a flood. Matthew says the rain descended. Jesus' uh, illustration in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Jesus says the rain descended, and the winds blew, and the floods came. Now, I want you to imagine, if you will, when the rains come, your house is tried from the top. Let's see what kind of roof you got. Amen. When the winds blow, we're going to see what kind of walls you got. Amen. And, and, when, and when the floods rise up, we're going to see what kind of foundation you have. Y'all see this? 
So your house, according to Matthew's illustration uh, of Jesus' invitation, is, is the elements will try you from the top. They're going to try you from the bottom. And they're going to try you from every side. Y'all see that? So I want you to understand something. When the adversity come, adversity don't just hit you one way. Adversity attack all your ways. See, when the storm come, it ain't just your health. It's your kids ain't acting right. It's your chain strange and your money's funny and your bank is in the tank. It's your friends put a rumor out on you and it wasn't true. They were just hating on the fact that you got a blessing they wish they had and they was envious and they took your name and ran it through the mud. Amen, Walls. It, it, it's when it all hits you all at once. When you ain't got no money and then your plumbing go out. Amen. It's when you don't, you're barely paying your car note oh, four more years on it and then the engine want to act up. See, adversity come when it all hits you, not one thing at a time, but all of it at the same time. I need somebody went through a storm before. I said it don't come. Well. Think about it. If it came one at a time, you could deal, couldn't you? Oh, you'd be sick now for a couple weeks and you pop up and then something else happened after you rebound, you pop up and you know you lose your job. That's all right. You get another one, you pop up. But I want you to imagine now all of it coming at the same time. So, so, so laying on a solid foundation is crucial to the life of the house. Since we're all building on something or someone, it's imperative that our building can stand once it starts raining. Now, 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 your building standing, your house standing in the summertime is all fine. But the summertime is when it's all glorious. That's when it's good. See, that's, that's about the 1st and the 15th. Amen. Now, that's Christmas time. Amen. That's your birthday time. You know, it, it's all good, right? It, 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 ain't, ain't no stormy clouds. It's all right. But, but you got to understand that the storm is a coming. And, 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 and your house will be proven once the storm hit. No one is immune to storms. It rains on everyone. All of us at one time or another have had our spiritual houses tried. The rain will come with the storm bringing flooding and subsequent pressure on every house. Every house will be tested. The difference between the outcomes of these houses is based on where it is built. And that is determined by how went one went about building it. Paying the price to build on the foundation will prove itself to be priceless once it starts raining. Adversity in life will bring out who we really are and who we really are. I wish I had somebody knew what I'm talking about. Listen, you're going to prove what kind of Christian you are when it starts raining, and you're going to prove whether or not you truly believe God got you once it starts raining. Some people don't really believe God got them. They come to church and act like he does, but you, you let it start raining long enough. Let life shake your house. Let, let your walls come crashing in. Let your roof get beat up. Let the foundation get tried by the flood, and then we forget who's we are. Amen. I'm, a, I'm, I, I'm led to believe that when Jesus, uh, uh, when, when the Hebrew writer quotes the psalm writer, that he'll never leave us, no forsake us. That's under any circumstance. I'm reminded that Jesus didn't leave the three Hebrew boys in the furnace, showed up in the fire with them, walked through the fire with them. We, kinda, we have the kind of God who will strap it up with us, get down in the muck with us, fight our battles with us. He don't send us in the battle by David would say the battle belongs to the Lord. The Lord come alongside us with inside of the battle and fights the fight with us. Amen. So, so I want us to understand now it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And, 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 and we have to understand that adversity brings out who we really are. And the storms of life show us how or on what our uh, spiritual houses are constructed. Now, I want to just show you a couple of scriptures here, and we're going to be done real quick. I want to show you John 16, verse number 33. I want us to understand that when you're a child of God, you got to expect adversity. You got to anticipate it. It, it. it ain't something you can, like, hope you get out of, without, get out of life without it. You, we, we all going to face it one time 
or another. Look at what Jesus tells his disciples, John 16, verse number 33. These things I've spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Now I want you to understand this. You can't, you can't really get your mind around peace until you're in trouble. Oh, y'all missing what I'm saying. A lot of folk think peace is the absence of turmoil. You know, it's the absence of war. You, you don't truly, truly experience peace until there's hell breaking out around you and you cool in the middle of it. Oh, y'all missed what I said. I said hell then broke out around you and you cool in the middle of it. It, 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 it's, it's when everything come crashing down. God gives you peace in the midst of the storm. Y'all ever heard the example? Preachers preach it all the time. That there's an eye in the middle of the storm. Well, that's taken to understand what we understand of hurricanes, right? Hurricanes is when the wind get to be over 75 miles an hour. The rain comes. It beats upon cities and wrecks cities. And flooding happens in the city. And there's all kind of turmoil. But, but meteorologists teach us that there is an eye in the middle of the storm where there's no rain and it ain't no wind but you're in the middle of the hurricane which means to your left to your right to your front to your back is chaos and turmoil but right smack dab in the middle of the storm is peaceful i want y'all to understand what it means to be at peace see being at peace is when all is well with you that don't mean all is well with them. It don't mean all is well with her. It don't mean all is well with him. It don't mean all is well with your mama. It just mean all is well with you. Oh, y'all missing this. Y'all miss. It, 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 it means you get to enjoy the comfort of God while everybody else is going through the muck. Paul, Paul is very interesting. Paul, uh, in Acts chapter 14, Acts chapter 14, the, it's, it's, it's interesting. Uh, I want to give you the scripture real quick. It says, and when they had preached the, the gospel to that city and made many disciples, they returned to Lystra and I Iconium and Antioch, strengthening the souls of the disciples. Look at how the early church came together to encourage one another. See, they came in from off the road and they found other brothers and sisters in Christ and they wanted to encourage them. They wanted to strengthen them. And so they exhorted them to continue in the faith, saying, now listen, don't, don't go dropping faith in Jesus Christ because it's getting a little tough. See, that's how we encourage one another. That, that's what it means to build up one another because all of us are facing spiritual adversity right now. You may not even know you're about to face it. It might be right around you and you don't even know. Now, with that being said, it, you, it's going to take faith in God to protect you from that. And, and so Paul and them was coming together and saying, now listen, we, we want to encourage you that you're going to have to go through trials and tribulation, but we want to tell you, keep the faith. Don't desert the faith. I know it sounds, looks bad, it smells bad, tastes bad. You look at the news, cops shooting folk, uh, 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 folks shooting folk, mama shooting folk. And listen, it's bad out there, but you got to understand, don't leave the faith. That's what Paul said. And he says, now we must go through many tribulations to enter the kingdom of God. Now I want us to ask ourselves an honest question. Uh, our honest question is, if we knew heaven's glory was on the other side of the trial, would you be willing to go through it? Would you be willing to face it? If, if you knew the glory of God was on just on the other side of your trial, if you focus on what you're going to get, wouldn't it make what you're going through pale in comparison? I mean, think about that. Think about that. Would, would it, wouldn't it not be easier to deal with whatever adversity you got going if you knew just on the other side of that was the glory of the almighty God? Because if we're honest with ourselves, the little stuff we go through down here, in the grand scheme of what God has for us is nothing. Think about it. We're going to trade in a body that gets sick for one that don't feel pain. I don't, don't miss that. Don't miss that. Y'all see that? That, 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 that? that our loved ones dying. 
and us having separation from our loved ones. That happens while we're here. But over there, that don't happen no more. It's called the, the, the great getting up morning when we are reunited with our family members. We, we, we trade in what we got here for something far better. Don't you think we could face death down here a little bit easier when we know in God's glory it won't be no more? That we can deal with sickness and adversity and not having stuff because we go into a place where we won't need anything. Just a thought, just a thought. Paul would say to the Roman church in Romans chapter 8, verse number 35, look what he says. He says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Now look at the things he names. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for your slaughter. And yet, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Now, we just read verse 35, 36, 37. Now, I got a question. Paul says, who shall separate us? But then he gives us a list of a bunch of what's. Okay, y'all missed what I said. I said he asked this question, who? And then he lists a bunch of what's. Y'all see that? He, he don't say this demon and that person and this guy and this woman and, and the four-headed beast and the sick. He, he, he ain't said nothing about nobody. He give us a bunch of what's. Oh, y'all missed. Look. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Then he lists off not who's, but what's. It ain't no who around that's going to get us down. We focus on the what's. And Paul tells us it ain't a who nor what. Are y'all missing it? That's the reason why when I go through my tribulation, that won't separate me. Distress won't separate me. Persecution won't separate me. Famine, nakedness, peril, a sword won't separate me. He says, yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Y'all see that? I, li listen, I, I, I want to preach a little bit more of this and we're going to go home. Listen, listen. I want us to understand, brothers and sisters, that we are going to have to build a house on Jesus the Christ. That you can't build your spiritual house on no one, no who, or no what save Jesus Christ and himself crucified. There is no other name by which man shall be saved except Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the foundation can no man lay because he is that which is laid. His name is Jesus Christ. We must build our house on him who said, I am the way. Matter of fact, can I, can I get a little Billy Washington on you real quick? Listen, y'all don't tell him I did this. Mama, you act like you ain't heard this. But I remember hearing Billy Washington speak one time. And he said, listen, you got to build your house on Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, Jesus Christ need to be your house. Oh, y'all act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. If you go build a house, you got to have a foundation. And Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter Number five and verse number 11, I think it's around in there. I'm sorry, verse, chapter three and verse number eight. For other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Every house got to have walls on it. And, and Isaiah said in Isaiah 26 and verse number one that he has built walls for our salvation. Every house got to have a roof on it. And the Bible said that Jesus Christ is the head of the church. Amen. Every house got to have a window to give off light and Jesus said I am the light of the world. Every house got to have a door and Jesus said I am the door. No man enter but by me. Every house got to have
have a walkway or a path to get to it. And Jesus said in John 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Watch this now. If Jesus going to be your foundation, your walls, your roof, your door, your light, your path, amen, and he is the rock, and on him we stand. And that what the songwriter said, oh, Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All of the ground is shaking, sand. He must be the house. Now, this is how it ends. The one who builds on the surface, when the rain and the flood come, Bible says it falls. And it don't just lay down fall. Bible says, and great is the ruin of it. In other words, it all come crashing down. As a matter of fact, it crashed so hard that the whole thing just got to be wiped out because there's nothing there that's salvageable. We have to understand, brothers and sisters, when we build on anything other than Jesus the Christ, and you go through your adversity, your house is going to fall. I've seen a lot of people do it their way for a lot of years. And they keep doing it, and they keep rebuilding, and keep rebuilding, and they keep falling. Every storm come, it keep falling. And then finally they wake up one day and realize, I've been doing this thing my own way, and it's got me nowhere. And it's time for me to turn it over to the Lord. If you're here tonight and you don't know Christ, I want you to go home in a relationship with him. You come to him by faith in response to the gospel of Jesus Christ. The scriptures teach us that we have to believe that without faith it's impossible to please him. We come to him being willing to repent of our sins and confess that he's the Christ, the son of the living God. We bury you in water. You come up a new creature. Remain faithful unto them. And you will have built your house upon that rock. But you got to keep digging deep. Hearing and doing the word of God. Not just hearing only, but hearing and doing. And you will find that the deeper you dig on Christ Jesus, that when the storm rages and the storm keeps on coming in your life, you'll be attached with an anchor. Yeah, Y'all do know that anchors don't prove themselves until the boat start rocking. Listen, 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 listen. You, you can have a boat that has an anchor, but until it's dropped and the wind moves that boat over, we don't know how good that anchor actually is. So in other words, the anchor shows out in the storm. All Brother Tyson trying to say is you need to get attached to the anchor. And when the storms of life shake your house, shake your boat and rattle your tree, you can be attached to the anchor that you might lose the sail you might get beaten up but your boat not going nowhere because it's attached to the anchor if you're here tonight you have a problem that's bigger than you it's not bigger than god we already have two prayer requests brother barnes i want you to take these two we're going to pray for these two people when you come tonight we beg you right now it's together we stand and sing dress love i see for really you and me by the one who did atone just to show his matchless grace Jesus suffered for the race in Get Gethsemane alone, oh, what love, matchless love, 